So if you own an F-150 with a 3.5 or a 5.0, and your check engine light came on and the code is P00112212022, stick around and watch this video because I'm gonna give you all the information that you need to know about this problem. What's going on YouTube? My name is Mason. If you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button down there, click that bell for me so you can stay up to date with all my new content when all my new videos are coming out. So your check engine light just popped up in your face and your truck started running really, really rough whenever you're pulling out of your local taco hell. So you decided, since you're one of those DIYers, that you're gonna get your buddy Jimbo down at the local O'Reilly's to pull your codes so you can see what's wrong with it. So you take it down to Jimbo and Jimbo pulls up the codes and it's P00112122. It really doesn't matter. Well, Jimbo says, hey, I got a camshaft position sensor for this truck that I'll say, you can put that in there, that'll fix your problem. So you climb all over your hood, all up around the back of the engine on these things, and you get that camshaft position sensor put in. But three days later, your check engine light comes back on with the same problem. So I'm here to tell you that the only way to fix these codes that I've seen is to replace the variable camshaft timing phasers. And if you don't know what that is, then stick with me because I'm gonna tell you exactly what they are, what they do, and how you can fix them. So let's just start out by talking about what vehicles that the engines come in that had this problem. This problem is directly related to the 3.5 liter EcoBoost that came in the F-150 and the Expedition and the 5.0 Coyote engine, just normal naturally aspirated engine that came in the F-150s. That's also known as the 302. The year models on these are gonna be 11 up for the F-150s, 11 up for the F-150s, 3.5 or 5.0, 11 all the way up to current day. They're still doing the same design, minus, yeah. They're still doing the same design, kinda. It's not really the same. They've changed a lot of stuff on them over the years, but they're still having a lot of the same issues with these VCT phasers. So the Expeditions, I don't see this as common on, but there also isn't near as many Expeditions on the road as our F-150, so I kind of attribute that to there just being more F-150s and Expeditions. So on the Expeditions, they started putting the three fives in them, I believe in 2015, is it 2015 or 2016? But you'll know which one yours is because the 3.5 has the turbos. You, you just know that if you own one that had the 3.5. So now let's talk about some symptoms we're gonna see if this is going on with your vehicle. Some of the symptoms you're gonna see, number one, is gonna be a check engine light with the codes, and I know I've mentioned them already, but I'm gonna mention them again. The codes are P00112, 21, and 22. So that's the four codes that I see most commonly. Now if you're getting a code that says circuit fault, you could have different issues. I wouldn't recommend just automatically assuming that it's VCT phasers, but if you have one of those codes, which stands for exhaust or intake over advanced or over retarded. If you have one of those codes, then 99% of the time, your problem is the VCT phaser. Now, along with the VCT phaser, we also replace the VCT solenoid. So those two kind of just go hand in hand. I, I don't really talk about one, but when I talk about one, I'm basically talking about both of them. So second symptom you'll see for sure is you'll probably, it'll probably run rough. You'll probably have instances, it won't do it all the time, it's hit or miss, might run rough every now and then, might run rough here, there, whatever. It doesn't do it all the time, but you will see a difference in your drivability of your, you know, your engine. So third symptom you'll see, and I see this one, I don't know why I've never really had one do this to me when I've been test driving them and you know, diagnosing them and whatnot, but it seems like almost every customer we have come in complains about the check engine light being on with this code and is stalled on them or died at a stop sign or stoplight. I don't know why that is, I don't know why they do that, but it just seems to be, you know, almost every customer that comes in here is complaining about those symptoms. So, so to really understand this problem about VCT phasers, variable cam timing phasers, on the 3.5 and 5.0s, you really gotta understand how VCTs work. And this is not just for, this applies to all makes and models. They all work pretty similar. Uh, they all work off oil pressure. So what I did was, I just recently done one uh, on a 5.0 that has, uh, I put four VCT phasers on it. So I took one of the VCT phasers apart, which we usually don't do, 
and I shot them a video of that, so I'm gonna overlay that here and try to do my best to explain to you guys how this VT, VCT works. So what you'll see right now is I'm taking the top cap off of the VCT phaser. Then there's a lower cap that's held on with six bolts. That top one is actually held in with a snap ring. And you'll see there's actually a lot more parts in here than what you would think there are. There's a lot of little clips and springs and whatnot. Uh, but the main part of it, the main part of it here is these veins. And as you see, these veins here can have the ability to move. And your, basically your camshaft is connected to one of those pieces and your timing chain is connected to the other. And the way that vein's in there actually allows there to be an advance or retard the timing. It means it adds or removes timing while your engine's running and it does that with oil pressure. As you can see, the, there's oil everywhere inside of it. So what you'll see here is there is a plunger that is controlled by that solenoid that I mentioned earlier. And it actually allows oil to flow through the little bitty passages that's in the center of this piece. If you'll see these passages right here, you see what I'm pointing at. Those little passages are where oil flows through that allows these veins, it all goes down into inside of this and moves the veins, it advance or retard, add or remove timing as you go down the road as you need it. You would typically need more advance whenever you're commanding a lot of engine power. You're under a heavy load and you're trying to go faster, maybe up that hill. You would typically retard whenever you're in a position where you want to optimize fuel mileage, not worry about so much power. On the intake side, it's um, more or less vice versa on the exhaust. The exhaust is a little different than the intake. So, so I want to take a quick second and talk about some of the differences between the 3.5 and 5.0s because they're not identical. They are a lot different. And as you see here, there's actually this big spring that's around the front on the 3.5s versus the 5.0s. So these are definitely totally different VCT phasers. That said, the repair process from engine to engine is a lot different as well. On the 5.0s, I usually do it with the cab on. I leave the cab on and I just pull the valve covers in the front cover. Whereas the 3.5 has a lot more stuff, it has charged air cooler pipes, it has a much more intricate cooling system because of the turbos and all that extra added stuff that those require. So there's just, it's a lot bulkier in there. And I have found over the years that it's a lot easier to just remove the cab off of the frame. I know most people just think it's insane when they come in here and they see, they see these things tore apart this way but it's actually not as bad as you'd think. It's not really hard to get off, and the reason that it, the reason that it's not very hard to get off, the cab's not hard to remove, is because they assemble these things down the assembly line with the cab off, and then at the end, set the cab on. That's just how they build them. Uh, so they really design them for ease of assembly line procedure. So if you're thinking about maybe repairing your VCT phasers at home, and you have a 3.5, if you don't have a lift at home, and you can't remove the cab, you can do it without removing it. The problem you're gonna run into is that there is a lot of stuff to take off. Believe me, I've done a few of them without removing the cab, and I don't think I'll, unless I'm just absolutely forced at gunpoint, I don't think I'll ever do another one that way. Now the 5.0, if you have a 5.0 and you're trying to do it at home, it's a lot more easy to do. It's easier to get to a lot of the stuff that you have to remove, you know, the valve covers and the front cover and all to get in there to replace the VCT phasers. So you're also probably thinking, do I have to replace the timing chains whenever I replace the VCT phasers? And the way I always break it down to people is how many miles is on your vehicle. If you have 70 or 80,000 miles on it, I wouldn't replace my timing chains if I was doing my own because they're really just not wore out. There's nothing wrong with them. If you can take the chains off and the guides off and look at the guides and there's no visible damage, then I would say that there's really just nothing wrong. So there's really no need to replace them. If you have 200 to 250,000 miles, it's probably a good idea to just go ahead and get all new stuff while you're in there. It's definitely not a bad idea. So I do want to say for those of you that's watching this video that might not have the codes, but you have a VCT rattle, especially on the three fives because those are really, really common about having a rattle. I'm actually gonna make a whole separate video here soon, as soon as I get my next one in that's rattling. It's been a, uh, about a week or two, so I haven't had one that I could do. I would have done it in this video, but I just don't have one to show you guys. So I'm just gonna make a whole separate video about rattling, so just stay tuned and stick with me. I'm gonna get to y'all about the rattle.
So you might be asking yourself, you know, I got this VCT phaser problem. It's a pretty big repair. It's going to have a lot of labor in it. Uh, well, what about those of you that maybe are watching this video and don't have this problem yet? You're thinking to yourself, how do I prevent from having this problem other than going and trading it in for a Chevrolet? One super simple thing that you can do to keep from having this problem is change your oil. If you change your oil every 5,000 miles, I do not believe that you will have this problem. 99% of these that we see are from poor maintenance. It's people who go 10, 12, 14,000 miles without changing their oil. They run conventional motor oil, they're not running synthetic. They run way, way too long on intervals. And basically what happens is that oil breaks down and gets dirty and it gets sludged and trash and all in it from being so old. And then that goes into your camshaft, into your VCT phasers, and you've seen how small those passages are. What do you think happens when one of them clogs up? That's what happens is a lack of oil flow to the VCT phaser and they're not able to work properly. So then your, your motor's telling it to advance, but it won't because it's, it's clogged up. It's just a bad situation. So that's the one thing that I will tell you that you can do to stop from having this problem is maintain your vehicle. Just change your oil, change your oil, change your oil, change your oil. And you don't have to spend $150 on some high mileage synthetic, synthetic motor oil you just don't have to do it. You run conventional 5W, 5W20 in the 5Os and 5W30 in the 3.5. You just run conventional motor oil or maybe even synthetic blend, which is what we use here. If you run synthetic blend, you can go four to 5,000 miles based on how hard you're running it. Four to, if you change it every four to 5,000 miles, you're gonna be great. You're gonna be golden. You're not gonna have any problems, no sludge, and you stop paying attention to when it tells you to change it on your dash. That's the main thing. It's people just wait till it tells you on your dash and by then usually it's too late. So also I want to talk about you know what all is actually replaced whenever I do one of these repairs. So obviously I'm replacing the VCT phasers and the VCT solenoids which I've already mentioned and I'm replacing all the gaskets. So front cover gasket, valve cover gaskets, front crank seal, all that stuff. Any kind of rubber gasket that I can replace along the way I'm going to replace it. Um, the other thing that I always, always, always replace when I do this, I don't really care how long it's been since you've had one, is I put a water pump in them. These 5.0s, especially the 5.0s, but the 3.5s are pretty bad about leaking nowadays too. But if you've owned a 5.0 for very long, you've probably had problems with the water pump. They just, they're, they're junk. They just leak, they leak and go out and sling belts off and all kinds of stuff. So I always put a water pump. Along with the water pump, I always replace the T-connector, which sits right in front of your water pump pulley, if you're wondering what that is. If you just look at that thing wrong, like if you just look, you know, look at it real hard, you just jump at it, man, it'll start leaking. It'll just start squirting. It's just a little quick connect fitting, and they leak all the time. If you touch one, look at it, you got to replace it. So along with those things, some other things that I like to do whenever I do this repair is spark plugs. I like to put spark plugs in them based on the mileage. If it's got even close to 100,000 miles on it, I will usually go ahead and replace the spark plugs. I will also, whenever I do this repair, I also change the oil when I get done because, you know, if all that stuff that you might have gotten in the engine, you want to change that oil, just get new, get some good fresh oil in it on these VCT phasers. What most of you have probably been wondering watching this video is how much is this going to cost me? How much is it going to cost me? Now, if you watch any of my other videos, you know that I kind of guesstimate on price because it varies so much with area. Something that might cost you $1,500 here might cost you $2,500 where you live. Uh, this is in dollars in U.S. currency for you people in Canada or wherever else in the world you're watching this. But this repair typically costs where I'm at anywhere from, depending upon those things that I just mentioned, around 2500 to 2800 depending on whether or not you get spark plugs and water pump depending on what all you replace and especially if you replace those timing chains guides and tensioners and all that while you're in there if you do that then you're definitely pushing over three thousand dollars to do this and that's paying labor and parts uh, the labor off of the 5.0, I believe, at a dealer is around nine hours something like that so if you're looking at you know 100 110 dollars an hour you're, I mean, you got a thousand bucks right there just in labor plus all the parts. And these VCT phasers are not cheap. They're like $250, $300 a piece. And that goes for the 3.5 and the 5.0. The 3.5 is a lot more labor intensive. I think it's around 14 or 15 hours to replace the VCT phasers. And that may vary based on 
where you're getting it done and what shop and what their labor rate and all that stuff is. But if you got this problem, you might as well, if, if you're out of warranty, I should say, you should go ahead and get ready to break off some cash because it's gonna cost you a few thousand dollars at the least to get this problem solved. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you know, sometimes we just gotta tell it straight. Okay guys, well if you made it this far, then that means you know everything you need to know about the VCT phaser problem on the 3.5 and 5.0 Ford engines. And if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please go ahead and smash that like button. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, if I haven't convinced you that my channel, my videos are gonna be useful and the information is gonna be good that you're gonna get out of them, then if I haven't convinced you, then I'm probably not going to convince you and I'm really trying to give you everything I can give you here. But just please go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button for me. It really helps me out. So thanks for watching. Peace out.